Szanowni Państwo, o zabranie głosu proszę kanclerz Republiki. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give the floor to the Chancellor of the Republic of Germany, Angela Merkel. Sehr geehrter Herr Minister, Minister, Prime Minister, Director, Excellencies, but first and foremost, allow me to address myself, especially to those of you who are historical witnesses, ladies and gentlemen. For me, it is anything but easy to stand here before you and to speak to you. I am filled with deep shame in the face of the barbaric crimes that were committed here by Germans, crimes that are unfathomable, that defy our imagination, that are inconceivable, filled with horror and shock when confronted with the crimes and horrors inflicted upon women, men and children in this very place, one has to fall silent, for there are no words to express the sorrow and our mourning for the suffering and the murder of people here, for all the many people who were humiliated, tortured and murdered here. And yet, however difficult it may appear in this place that stands like no other for the most atrocious crime against humanity, to fall silent must not be our only response. This site places us under the obligation to keep the memories alive. We have to remember the crimes committed here and to name them. Auschwitz, this name stands like no other for the murder of millions of Jews in Europe, for the betrayal of all civilized values that was the Shoah. Auschwitz also stands for the genocide of Sinti and Roma in Europe, for the suffering and the murder of political prisoners and representatives of the Polish intelligentsia, of uh, resistance fighters, prisoners of wars from the former Soviet, U from the Soviet Union and other countries, homosexuals, disabled people, and numerous other people from all over Europe. The suffering inflicted upon the people in Auschwitz. They died in the gas chambers, they suffered hunger and froze in the cold, they suffered epidemics, were subjected to torturous exper pseudo-medical experiments, they were forced to work until totally exhausted. The horrors that happened here are unfathomable, they cannot be grasped. In the camp complex of Auschwitz alone, a minimum of 1.1 million people, the majority of whom were Jews, were systematically murdered in cold blood. Each and every one had a name. His and her dignity was inviolable. They have a family and a history. Their deportation already, they were crammed into cattle wagons. The procedure they underwent upon arrival, the arrival, the so-called selection at the REM, they all aimed to dehumanize these human beings, to strip them of their dignity and individuality. Officially, this place, uh, as part of UNESCO World Cultural Heritage, is called today Auschwitz-Birkenau, German Nazi concentration and extermination camp, 1940 to 1945. This full name is important. Urspionchim is on Polish territory, but in October 1939, Auschwitz was annexed as part of the German Reich. It was a German extermination camp operated by Germans, and I place value on stressing this fact. It is important that we clearly identify the perpetrators. We Germans owe this to the victims, and we owe it to ourselves. To keep alive the memory of the crimes committed, to identify the perpetrators, and to commemorate the victims in a dignified manner, that is our enduring responsibility. It is not open to any negotiation, and it is an integral part and will forever be an integral part of our country. Acknowledging that responsibility is an integral part of our national identity, our self-perception uh, as an enlightened and liberal society, as a democracy where rule of law reigns. Once again, Jewish life is flourishing in Germany. We are linked to Israel through manifold and friendly ties. That is anything but to, take and to be taken for granted. It is a great gift, akin to a miracle. But it cannot undo the horrors that happened. It cannot bring back to life the Jews that were murdered. There will forever be an empty space in our society. 70 years ago, 
the basic law, Germany's constitution came into force. It was influenced by the lessons from the horrors of our past. However, we are also aware of the fact that man's inviolable dignity, freedom, democracy, and rule of law, however precious these values may be, are very vulnerable and fragile indeed. This is why we have to time and again strengthen these fundamental values, improve them, protect them and defend them in our everyday life, in our everyday interaction, but also in the actions of a government and in political discourse. These days, this is more than just rhetoric, these days it is important that we state this in an unequivocal manner because what we're experiencing of late is an alarming level of racism, increasing intolerance, a wave of hate crimes. We are witnessing and experiencing an attack on the fundamental values of liberal democracy and a very dangerous historical revisionism that serves a hostility that is directed against specific groups. We are focusing our attention especially on anti-Semitism, which poses a threat to Jewish life in Germany, in Europe and beyond. The more clear and unequivocal do we have to state that we will not tolerate any form of anti-Semitism. Everyone ought to feel safe and at home in Germany and in Europe. Auschwitz, more than any other site, reminds us and urges us and places us under the obligation, each and every one of us, to be vigilant, to preserve humanity and to protect our neighbor's dignity. Because it is, as Primo Levi once said, who was born 100 years ago in Turin, who survived Auschwitz as a forced laborer, and later, as I said, wrote, it happened. Therefore, it can happen again. End of quote. And that is why we must not close our eyes and ears when people are being verbally abused, humiliated or isolated. We have to stand up and take issue with and openly disagree with those who incite other people to hatred and promote prejudices against people of a different faith or a different origin. And part and parcel of the responsibility that we bear is remembrance. We must never forget. We cannot draw a line, nor can we allow a trivialization of the Holocaust. Or to use it, to put it in the words of the Auschwitz survivor and former president of the International Auschwitz Committee, Noach Fluke, and I quote, memory is like water. It is vitally important and it finds a path of its own, seeking new spaces, making its way towards other people. It does not have an expiry date and it is and cannot be declared officially declared as dealt with or completed. End of quote. That this memory that is vitally important seeks and finds a path of its own, as Noir Fluch put it, is something that we owe in a special way to many of the contemporary witnesses, the survivors. Thus, I am immensely pleased to be able to welcome some of them amongst us today. It was you who, over the past years, have time and again spoken to us and shared your experiences with us. Who can imagine the strength it takes to once again and time and again recall these painful experiences or even to return to this very place. You are sharing the knowledge about your life stories with younger people for them to learn. You summon the courage and the strength for reconciliation. That is genuine human greatness. I'm immensely grateful that we may learn from you and may listen to you. Very soon, the liberation of Auschwitz will be 75 years ago, will have taken place 75 years ago. Few and fewer people can tell us uh, their, about their experiences from that period in time. And that was the reason why the writer Navid Kermani once aptly said, and I quote, for any memory to be etched into our hearts to which the memorials, stumbling blocks, and rituals of remembrance may refer, it will be even more important for future generations to go and see those places with their own eyes where Germany crushed man's dignity, to travel to those countries that Germany drowned in blood." End of quote. In many places, the perpetrators were trying to cover, have tried to cover up their tracks, such as ex extermination camps such as Bel Berjek, Sobibor, Treblinka, Mali Trostinets, Babinja, or in 
thousands of other places in Europe where Jews, Sinti and Roma, and many other people, even whole village communities, were murdered. However, here in Auschwitz, the SS and their henchmen were not successful in covering up their tracks. This memorial bears testimony, and we must preserve that testimony. Those who visit Auschwitz and see the watchtowers and the barbed wire, the barracks and prison cells, the remains of the gas chambers and crematoria will be haunted by the memory. As Kamani put it, it will forever be etched into their hearts. Ten years ago, the former Polish foreign minister, Władysław Bartoszewski, who himself was imprisoned in Auschwitz, initiated the foundation of the Auschwitz-Birkenau Foundation. Dear Mr. Siewinski, I would like to thank you and all those who have worked in this foundation have dedicated themselves to preserving this memorial and this center for documentation. And I thank all those who have participated in the project of restoration and conservation. You and have shown great engagement, and you're working hard to make sure that this place continues to bear witness. Brick barracks were repaired and reinforced so as to preserve them for the future. Excavation work was carried out. Support walls have been ex erected. Tents were set up. Clothes and positions, the few belongings of the victims, were restored and preserved. The conservation work and the future plans, of course, require much more foundation capital for the next 25 years. And Germany will make a substantial contribution. We took a decision yesterday, together with the minister presidents of the various federal lender of Germany. Thanks to the efforts of the foundation and the many international tour guides, this memorial has become a place of learning and educating people, a place of reflection and acknowledgement, a site, a place that sends out the message, never again. I'm immensely grateful for that. But nothing, nothing we do can bring back the people who were murdered here. Nothing can undo these unprecedented crimes. These crimes are and continue to be part of Germany's history. And this is a story, a history that has to be told time and again, so as to ensure that we remain vigilant, to intervene at a very early stage, to ensure that these crimes are not repeated, to ensure that we fight racism and anti-Semitism, stand up to it with dedication and determination, anti-Semitism in all its despicable forms. This history, this has to be shared, this story has to be told so as to honor the memory of the dignity of each and every individual and the honor the memory of the victims. We remember and commemorate the people who came from various countries of Europe to Auschwitz and were deported there. We remember and commemorate in this very place the many Polish victims, majority of them were political prisoners, for whom that camp, the prison camp, the concentration camp had first been set up. We remember and um, commemorate the six million murdered Jews and the roughly one million Jews that were murdered in Auschwitz-Birkenau. We remember and commemorate the Sinti and Roma who were deported, tortured, and murdered. We remember and commemorate the victims of mass executions by firing squad. We remember and commemorate those who were deported to ghettos, those who were hiding in fear for their lives, those who had to flee their homes. We remember and commemorate all of those who lost everything, their families and their friends, their home, country and their family home, their hopes and their plans, their trust and their joy at being alive, and their dignity. We remember and commemorate those who were kept wandering around for years, even after the war had ended, and those who had to wait for a long time in camps for displaced persons. Those who survived had been severely marked by the horrors that they had experienced. In her memoirs, Margot Friedländer wrote, and I quote, they first had to learn once again that they were human beings, human beings that bore a name, end of quote. Many of them asked themselves the question, why me? Why did I survive and not my little sister? Why not my best friend? Why not my very own mother or husband? Many of them for a very long time, if at all, were able to find out how and where their close relatives had been murdered. These wounds will never heal. 
the more grateful I am to everyone who has summoned the courage and strength to speak about their recollections and experiences, to share the pain and the recollections in order to uh, contribute to reconciliation. I bow my head before these people. I bow my head before the victims of the Shoah. I bow my head before their families. I thank you very much for allowing me to be with you today.